Each day that I wake, I don't take it for granted. It is a testimony. My isha ni vita kushinda tu shizala kini through it. I'm still here. Oh, well, I'm a bumpa day. Nama futa bumpa day. I ain't gonna keep it to myself. No way, I'm gonna tell it on the mouth. My God is so faithful The God I worship every time You alone we praise You alone we praise Yeah My God is amazing The God I seek Every time You alone we praise oh. And you alone we praise You are God of wonders You are God of wonders Yes you are You are God of miracles Yes you are You are God of wonders
Praise God. I thank God that uh, you have tuned into our service today. I just want to encourage you that this is the best day of your life. Your life shall never be the same again. I just want to declare and prophesy that you are reaching out to your next level. And somebody might say, how am I reaching out to the next level when I'm sinking in Mary's sand, quick sand, I'm sinking down, how am I going up? He said, he will lift you up and he will set your feet upon a rock, a rock that is higher than you. I want to pray with you today and I want for sure to tell you and confirm for a fact that your season has to change. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your children today. I pray for them individually. Father, those that are going through challenges right now and they are having financial challenges. Lord, you spoke in your word very clearly and you said, oh Lord God, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you supply the needs of your children today, that they'll be able to pay those bills, they'll be able Lord, Lord, to meet those financial obligations, that King of Glory will make a way in their finances. My Father, I pray there are those who are deep in debt, there are those who don't know what to do, there are those who have no money absolutely. My Father, you say that you will bless us and will abound with much. I pray in the name of Jesus that you call an abounding, you cause an abounding, that you cause prosperity that you cause increase. I pray for those that are sick by your stripes. We are healed. I pray for those who don't know what to do, Lord. Things seem, oh Lord God, oh Father, to have just hit a dead end. I pray in the name of Jesus, King of glory, you are a way maker. You said I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You said I'm the door. You are a door. You are a gateway. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, my Lord Jesus, that they will get away out of it all. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for salvation. I pray for deliverance. I pray for total, oh Lord God, oh Father, deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for them and I bless them right now in Jesus Christ's holy name. And somebody says, Amen and amen and amen today is an amazing day I thank God for you that you've tuned in for those of you who were with us last Thursday we agreed that amen there's stuff that we need to know ladies and gentlemen and um, we started by making a declaration and I want you to to make a declaration together with me and say I know who I am you need to know who you are as a person who you are in Christ and who you are in our society. I know who I am. I can do all things. I want you to confess that I can do all things. And the scripture says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. It's not my strength, but it's his strength. It's not my ability, but it is his ability. I can do all things. And what we mean by that? You'll be rich. What, what we mean by that? you build that house that mentioned you. What do I mean by that? Your business will go up uh, uh, higher than ever before. What do I mean by that? Amen. Your ministry will rise to the next level, to the next dimension. So I can all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me then I want you to confess I am confident I am confident why because in Joshua chapter 1 God told Joshua be confident be strong and courageous mm -hmm. he said uh, let my word not depart out of my, your mouth then what will happen he said then you will have good success and you will make thy way prosperous so by decreeing and declaring I'm confident I'm confident I fear nothing I am strong. God is on my side. You are beginning the journey of making your way prosperous and attaining good success. Now, you must confess I win in all situations because God has not promised us that we're going to lose a battle. He said our enemy will come, amen, in seven directions. But our enemy will come in one direction, but will be smitten in seven directions. He said, mm -hmm. no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. No tongue that prays against me in accusation, that will succeed. That means, amen, I win in all situations. He said, a thousand shall fall upon my side, and ten thousands upon my right arm, and no harm shall come near my tent. 
near my dwelling. What does that mean? It means I win in all situations. I could continue giving you amen, hallelujah scriptures because he says, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who has loved me. You know, he says, greater is he who is in me than the devil who is in the whole wide world. I win in all situations. Why do I win in all situations? Because uh, in all these things, I'm more than a conqueror. Yes, that's not enough. He says, if God be for us, who can be against us in Romans 8? Come on now, if God be for you, who can be against you? Now, hear me, child of God, we win in all situations. How do we win in all situations? Because I'm an overcomer, amen? Whosoever is born of God overcomes this world. You are an overcomer, so you win in all situations. Then you need to continue to bring them many declarations I could give you, but that's not my subject today. You need to decree and declare, I'm loved. Even when people hate you, even when people say they love you, then they don't love you. I am loved. God loves me. I am loved no matter what. Amen. And nobody can talk me out. Amen. Of being loved because God so loved the world and he gave his only son. When God loved me so much, he gave his son. That's how valuable I am. The son is the king. The son is God himself. I'm that valuable. I am loved. So you need to know that. Now, let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter... Ephesians chapter what? Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. In the interest of time, I'm going to be um, a little bit fast. Ephesians chapter 2, what does it say? From reading from verse 1. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. He's talking about me and you. In which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. And the rule of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following the desires and the thoughts like the rest who were by nature deserving the wrath of God. But because of his great love for us, come on, I like that. God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. We were made alive with Christ. Amen. So we have the life of Christ in us. Amen. Hallelujah. So let nobody lie to you that you're going to die. Amen. You will live in the name of Jesus. Why? Because you were made alive in Christ. Amen. You have the life of Christ in you. Now let's move on a little bit. Mm -hmm. Verse, that was verse 5. In, mm -hmm. Let me begin from verse 4. Because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us up with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Now, ladies and gentlemen, he says, uh -huh, this is a very key thing for it is by grace that you have been saved. Mm -hmm. And he says, by this reason, not only has he saved you by grace, but he has exalted you to a position of being raised up and being seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. I'm going to go into this one in a little bit depth as we move on. Let's first read. Now, in order that in the coming ages he might show his incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace, he repeats it again, that you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Verse 10. So your salvation is by grace. It's not of your works. It's not none. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. But accepting Jesus and accepting his grace, once you get his grace, you're saved, and you're going to heaven. Now, but he goes on to say, for we are God's handwork. And the version say we are God's workmanship. You know, when you make a vehicle, you dictate the speed at which it will run, you price it, come on, you give it a warranty. The creator, the workman, the person who does the handwork, decrees and declares, you know, what it's going to do. So, let's move on. If some, the phone you're looking at, the TV you're looking at, viewing this program, whoever created it, whoever made it, gave it the purpose, the design, and you're using it in your house, amen, based on what the gentleman or gentle or sweet lady, amen, who did the manufacturing, who created it, determined it to be. So he who created you determines who you become. Hello. Now let's go into the depth of that. 
not by work so that you can boast. For we are God's handwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared for us in advance to do. Now, we are cre created for good works which God prepared for us in advance to do. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very, very excited about this, that we are created for good works. Then how do we strike a balance between being saved by faith and by grace that we don't have to do any work? Amen. He says, no, you've been saved by grace to do good works. So you've been saved by grace. You did nothing to save yourself, but now you've been saved into the good works. What are these good works, amen? Living, we, we, we didn't talk about that, amen? Because I want today to show you the difference between as a new creation reality, you were born again, you became a new creature according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. This new creature, this new creation, amen? This distinct person, you've now been saved by grace, amen? Now you have been called to do the good works. Why? Because God has ordained certain works that we need to do not as a means of justifying us, but as a means of us doing what God has called us to do. I don't know if I'm confusing you. Now that you are saved by grace, there is a demand on you of things you need to know. There is a demand for you to share the gospel. There is a demand for you to give unto God, give and it shall be given to you. There is no way, amen, you will not giving and expect to be given. You give and it shall be what? Given back to you, shaken together, uh -huh, pressed down, running over. Shall men, not God, shall men give back to your bosom. These are principles you already said. Sacrifices, amen. Like Isaac, amen, hallelujah. These are things you said, there is a time in your life when God will demand for a sacrifice, amen. Those good works are not justifying you, are not qualifying you to go to heaven, but as I will teach you later, they are leading you to a place of God's calling in your life. And these are the good works that are going to sustain you in the heavenly realms. There are many of us who have been saved by grace, but we are not operating in the dimension of anointing which is in the heavenly realms. Why? Because of the lack of the good works we are called to do, we cannot operate in those spheres. And if we don't operate in those realms, there is a kind of money you will never operate in. There is a kind of financial dimension you will never get in. There is a kind of investments you will never get in. Why? Because you are not operating in those realms. They are realms, ladies and gentlemen. That's why God said to Cyrus, my anointed one, I will go before him. I will shut up bronze gates. Mm-hmm. I will shatter all iron bars. Uh -huh. I will make the crooked path straight. Mm -hmm. Then what else is going to happen? He said, then will I show him the secret treasures hidden in the secret places. It is an anointing that you reach in that takes you to a dimension of secret treasures hidden in the secret places. There is wealth hidden for you, but in order for you to tap into it, it is a level and a dimension of anointing while you were seated in the room with Christ Jesus. I'm about to show you, amen, that when we are saved by grace and then we are justified and then we are come on now, sanctified, we're seated in those heavenly realms. Now, in doctrines, when we talk about this, what we call the doctrine of salvation. The doctrine of salvation is you're saved by grace through faith. You confess with your mouth, amen. There are many people come to church and they've never confessed Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They're not saved. There are good people coming to church. You need to make a confession, amen. You need to make that public affirmation that I am born again. You need to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus, amen, is your Lord and Savior. That's the doctrine of salvation. Then we go to the doctrine of, um, of, 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 of justification that I'm going to go into and then sanctification that I will go into and then the doctrine of these good works. Now, there has always been a challenge in the uh, church, even in the theological world, between the animists and um, the, 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 the Calvinists. There is always an argument between them. Others believe, amen, it is your works that are going to give you salvation. Others believe, no, it is by grace. But then your works, amen, are a reward in heaven. It's what's going to give you a reward. It's what is going to help you with the work of the Holy Spirit. Come on now. So I'm going to show you these things, amen. If I'm saved by grace, amen, then do I have to do anything? He says, yes. Verse 10, 
you have been saved to do good works before God saved you. There are good works that we have prepared. That's what the scripture says, that you were prepared to do. So you cannot run away from these obligations. You cannot run away from giving. You cannot run away from praying. Mm -hmm. You cannot run away, amen, from fasting and seeking his face. You cannot run away from being a preacher of the gospel, witnessing and being a supporter, amen, of preaching of the gospel because not only is it a demand on you here on earth, it is what qualifies you now in the rewarding system of heaven. It is possible for you to reach heaven by grace, amen, but then you have no reward. Now, if there is a reward, amen, it means, amen, there is a purpose for that reward. Do you understand what I mean? So I don't want to go a lot into other subjects like eschatology and other subjects, amen, about his second return and so on. But please understand, you've been saved to do good works. It is upon you, amen, to do the good works and never give up on doing good works. I've had people have said, no, I don't tithe because tithe is an Old Testament thing. And so, but, but, but it was something in the law. You could be right, the tithe was in the law, mm -hmm. but Jesus said, Amen, you have, you keep doing the tithe, giving. I don't want to go into the tithing system right now, but even in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, and he put Adam in the garden, he said you can have everything, but don't touch that tree. That was the tithing system. There are things that God will say, I've given you everything, but that is just for me, don't touch it. How about now? So you've been created to do what? The good work. So I'm going to justify what I'm saying in scripture. Let us go to uh, First Peter. Marika Tero Bokoshika. I hope you're learning something new. Let's go to First Peter. Uh, chapter 1 through verse 6. No, Second Peter. Second Peter, chapter 1. Uh, verse 1 through 6. I'm reading from the NIV. Now, Marika Shata, thank you, thank you, love you. Moriko Shakayama Kasite. We're going there, we're going there, we're going there. We're going there, we're going there. We're going there, amen. We're going there. Amen. Marika Tere Moshete. Let me read from. Okay, it says from verse 1 through 6 Simon Peter, a bond servant mm -hmm, of Apostle, sorry, let me begin again. Simon Peter, a bond servant of Apostle Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by, the glo by glory and virtue. Now, I, need you, I want you to get an understanding that uh, salvation that is given us has released a divine anointing and power that, amen, all things that we have ever needed in life will get pertaining to life and godliness. We will have it and we should have it. Verse 4, by which have been given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped corruption that is in the world through lust, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and self-control perseverance, and perseverance godliness. Now we'll go into the depth of this. He says, you know what? He's given you all this glory and virtue. Mm -hmm. He's given you all these precious promises through that you may be partakers of his divine nature. Now, we've been saved by grace. When we keep now doing the good works, we begin to partake of his divine nature. That's why you find some people more anointed than other people. It's because as we continue to do the good works, we develop that grace of the divine nature of Christ. We become Christ-like in the anointing. We become Christ-like, amen, in the, our character. We become Christ-like in the things that we dispense. You understand? So it is very key, ladies and gentlemen. I challenge you today, amen, to be able, amen, to walk in that grace. Now, let's move on a little bit. Now, we need to discover who we are in Christ, saved by grace, but to do good works. Amina, to do good works. Now, when we begin doing good works, amen, and having a discovered who we are in Christ, because we are new creation, we are new creatures, we now cease to be like everybody else. I already taught that I don't want to go into the depth of it. Now, 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 when we are talking about, I want to talk about the word justification. What does it mean? Because now we've been saved by grace, so then what, what does that mean? We've been saved, but now we are being justified. Justified is just like you never committed any sin, amen? Uh, now, 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 now. The word justify is the word diacol, 
the kaiosis in the Greek language. And then in Latin, it is called justificatio. Justificatio. Now, justificatio, you've been justified, justificatio. Now, what does this mean? There's a difference between righteousness and right living. There are many people who are walking out there in the world doing the right things. But does that mean they are born again? No. They are right, walking in rightness. There are people who find amen in an office who will never be corrupt. They are right. They are doing rightness. But that does not mean they are righteous. Because we've received our righteousness as a gift from God. You understand? We've been made righteous by God. That is not our responsibility. It has been imputed upon us. It's been conferred upon us. But I'm about to tell you then, where does our responsibility come in as we're doing the good works? Now that I've been saved, amen, he's given me righteousness. Do I need to struggle to do anything else? Yes, as, as we study, that yes, you've been justified, you've been made righteous, but you have been called to do good works. So let's move on. Now he goes on to say, amen. Now, as I was telling you, Right to live in, it means when you are living, living right. There are a lot of people who are living right and they think their rightness is justifying them. No way. You've been made righteous by his grace. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. He has made him to be seen for us who knew no sin. Jesus knew no sin and he became a sinner for you and me. Uh -huh. That we might become and be made the righteousness of God in him. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've been made the righteousness of God through Christ. Our righteousness is through Christ. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith. Aha, uh -huh. my justification is what? By faith. You've been justified by what? By faith. Mm -hmm. Because we believe. So, having been justified by faith, Romans 5, verse 1, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace. We are at one with God. I don't care whoever condemns me, condemns you. I am the righteousness of God. You need to confess it. I am the righteousness of God. Let nobody keep calling you a sinner. Who are you? You are the righteousness of God. You have been justified. That's why the anointing of God dwells upon you. That's why you speak in those new tongues. That's why you have become a prophetic person. That's why you can see things that are heavenly. That's why angels are working with you and walking with you. Why? Because you are the right righteousness of God. Amen. No, 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 no. You, it means, he said, we are at peace. We are at peace. We are at one with God. Amen. We are like Christ himself. We are now Christ-like. Oh, that's why when I walk in that kind of anointing and knowledge, I can say it is done. It is done. Why? Because I'm at peace with God. I'm at one with God. I've been justified. Amen. Hallelujah. And nothing can stand in my way. So I take with the same authority right now, having the right standing with God, and I speak over your situation to change. I command it to change. Your crying has to cease. Your pain has to cease. Your stress has to cease in the name of Jesus. So I'm showing you where we derive our strength from. Where it's knowledge of knowing who we are and rediscovering who we are in Christ. Now, in Romans chapter 4, verse 24 through 25, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, to whom it shall be given. If we believe on him, that raised Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. So what gives you this righteousness? Believing. What makes you okay? Believing that Christ Jesus was what? Raised from the dead. Now, hear me. Who was delivered for our offenses, that means he was killed for our offenses, and was raised again for our justification. Now here he strikes a difference, that when Jesus was hanging on the cross, when he was hanging on the cross, you, you were forgiven. Because remember he said what? He said, my father, my father, why have you abandoned me? And he said, it is finished. Uh -huh. But in the Greek language it was tetelestai, amen, paid in full. Your sins were paid for in full at the cross. At the cross, our healing was paid for in full. At the cross, amen, your, 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 your poverty was paid for. You now qualify to become rich. Now, but justification, we receive justification because of his resurrection. Now, the resurrection has other power. That's, Paul, that's why Paul says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. When he was at the cross, there are things he did. 
he died. Now, when he rose from the dead, then now you were justified. You rose with him. You must rise from today. You're not going under. From today, whoever has taken your name, amen, in the altars of the cemeteries and the graves, you're coming out because you raised with what? With him. You've been justified. Now, justification means you've been acquitted. You know, if they took you to the prison, maximum prison, and then in the maximum prison, they say you've been acquitted, and yet you're supposed to have a life imprisonment or suffer death. You walk out of prison and nobody can take you back. That's what God did for us. When Jesus rose from the dead, he says, and then we were justified. He said, he who was delivered for offenses and was raised again for our justification, for our acquittal. We were acquitted. Acquitted from what? From sin, number one. Acquitted from what? From the law. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord. There are people who love the law so much and they think that they will fulfill parts of the law. There are people who can say this sin is bigger. Adultery is a bigger sin. Fornication is a bigger sin. Killing, murdering is a bigger sin. Uh, but lying is a small sin. It is a small one. Now, if you lie, amen. And when I read in the Bible, it says, and all the liars shall be pushed. In the book of Revelation, it says, and all the liars shall be cast into the lake of fire. Liars? Yes. Where are they going to be cast? In the lake of fire. That's what it is. So now, but here we've been justified from that sin. From the law. You get me? From that law. He's delivered us from the law. Because the law does not give life. The law gives death. It gives death. You end up being cast away into the, the, the lake of fire. Then he delivered us from death. Come on now. We've been justified from death. Let me tell you, child of God, I get so challenged by a man like Joe, 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 Jacob. He called his sons together and said, come with you, my sons. Let me bless you because God, our Israel, I'm going to die. Bless them and die. Moses, same thing. Blessed who? Bless this young man. Amen. Aaron. Amen. Hallelujah. No, in fact, Eliza put the clothing on him, the garments on him, and he went to die. Now, we move on, amen, hallelujah, and we move to who? We move to Elijah. He just goes. We go to Enoch. He just goes. We go to David. Do you know David was a king that anointed his, his son as king while he was living and blessed him and put the crown on him and he died? That's the way it should be. That's the, they lived in the Old Testament. Now, in the New Testament, he's taken death away from us. That means I'm not dying even if everybody sees me dead. I am not dying. That's why he said, even if you're dead, yet shall ye be alive again. Come on now. He has conquered death. We have conquered death. Come on now. Anything death-like is not taking you down. Scream at the top of your mouth. You are not going under. Death is not taking you. It's not taking your children. Come on, hear me. It's not taking your wife, it's not taking your husband in the name of Jesus. Why you've been justified? Rika Tarabasheke, Acts chapter 13, verse 38. Through this man, Jesus is preached unto you that forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe I have been justified from all things. They have been justified from what? All things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. He's saying the law of Moses has no justification, meaning even if you followed the whole law of Moses, fulfilled it very well, you would still not be justified. You would still not be acquitted. But Christ has taken us to the level of acquittal. I have been acquitted. Amen. I am free. I'm free. Tell you, I'm free. Amen. Now you need to get an understanding of that. Now in Romans chapter 10 verse 9, where have I been acquitted? So that I can do the good works. Hello. Now that's why the Bible says, amen. I'll come to that a little bit later. Now Romans chapter 10 verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus, believing in your heart, that is what? That God raised him from the dead, then what? You're going to be justified. Now, hear me, child of God. The power is in his resurrection. Justification comes because he's alive. Amen. He is alive. Now, to be justified means your works are immaterial. To be justified means as righteous as, as our Lord Jesus Christ. When God sees me now, I've been justified. That's why I carry the same anointing. I can do the same miracles. Amen. Like Jesus did. Why? Because I've been justified. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there are places where I would go and preach, especially um, even a little bit here in the country, but in crusades. 
And I would stand and say, today, before I preach, anybody who is deaf, anybody who cannot hear either one ear or both ears, stand up. Either I would make them come forward or stay where they are. And I tell the whole congregation or the people gathering, if God does not heal these people, you have a right not to receive him. You have a right not to believe in him. And I will not preach another sermon. And I just say, be healed. And they are healed. Where does that power come from? Because I've been justified. I'm just like Jesus. Now, I'm not claiming to be a man at the same footing with my Lord. No. He's my boss. He's my Lord. He's my king. But we have now been made joint heirs with him. We are joint heirs with him. We are seated in the heavenly realms with him. Amen. Demons should not be ter terrorizing us. We are above them. We are in the heavenly realms today. I pray in the name of Jesus that as you sleep tonight, you find yourself, amen, hallelujah, in the heavenly realms with authority and with power over sickness and over disease. I declare, and I declare you will live another 60 years, another 70 years, another 80 years from the years you already have. Amen. More years are coming and your eyes will be seen. Come on. Your ears will be hearing. Your teeth will still be in your mouth. Come on. Your breast will still be firm. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know what I'm talking to. Come on. Somebody shout, today is my day. I have been, uh, amen, hallelujah, justified. I am saved. I am justified. I'm about to close now, ladies and gentlemen. I feel so excited. Amen. In Romans chapter 5, verse 16 through 18, I choose to give you as much scripture so that you don't say this gentleman is coming up with a new doctrine. No. This has been there always, but some of us don't have knowledge of it. Therefore, Romans chapter 5, verse 16 through 18, Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, that is Adam, what he did subjected us all to die, subjected us all these problems we are going through. So one act of righteousness leads to justification. When Christ, amen, rose from the dead, we've all been justified as long as we believe in him, amen, hallelujah, and walk by faith. Now he says, amen, and leads us to justification and life for all men. One act of Christ, amen, that act of righteousness leads us to justification and life for all men. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not just justified to die. We've been justified to live. There are people who just say, even I've preached gospel to so many people, and they say, ah, for me, when I die, I'm going to, uh, when I'm about to die, I will confess my sin. People look at amen salvation as just as a means, amen, of going to heaven. It's, not, it's more than that. He's justified you to a good life. After today, I declare and I declare, live in the name of Jesus. Enjoy life in the name of Jesus. Have more than enough in the name of Jesus. Don't limit yourself with the thought lines and thought patterns that you've put in your mind for a long time. Free yourself. Sometimes, you know, the Bible says for your customs, mm -hmm, have, have, have made the word of God of no effect. There are things, customs, and patterns that have been introduced to us since we were young. And those patterns have characterized, and as we've been growing up, there is a way of thinking we developed, our philosophy, philosophy about ourselves. And you say, well, for me, as far as I'm concerned, it's like this. Now, those philosophies are hindering you from going to your next level. It's time you empty yourself. That's why Paul said in the book of Philippians, let the mind that was in Christ be in you also. Christ wasn't a sinner, but he came here on earth, was born of sinners, lived among sinners, ate with sinners, walked with sinners, talked with sinners, and saved sinners. You understand? That was the mind in Christ. He says even when the cross was put before him, amen, he endured the pain. He endured it knowing that a greater reward was coming. We go through challenges and problems. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a time you can go through a problem and you say, what did I do? When you're going through problems, the first thing in your mind is, what did I do? Some people even think, uh -uh, maybe if I don't do this, I'll get this. Hear me, child of God. You've been saved by grace to do good works. Do the good works, right? As you keep doing the good works, God will remember and will vindicate you and will lift you up in the heavenly realms. Amen? Keep doing the good works. I challenge you for good works today. Take care of the poor. Good works today. Amen? Take care of the church. There is a man in Luke chapter 7. He was a Roman centurion. He, he wasn't a, a Jew, 
But he had a challenge. Amen. His child was sick and was going to die. And they came to Jesus and they said, this man, the Pharisees themselves, the leaders of the synagogues, they said, this man loves our nation. He built our synagogue. And Jesus said, oh, at once, let's go to his home. And Jesus started the journey to go to this man's home to heal this man's child. Why? Because of the good works. Jesus did not even ask further questioning. He said, let's go. Now your good works quicken your miracle. Your good works open up the doors for God to help you. This man built the church. But some in the generation we are living in, people don't really esteem building of churches because they feel, I know I can move from this church and go to the other church and go to the other church. But there is a reward in building the church that when you have a problem, when your child is dying, when you have a challenge, amen, just remind God about it and it will be done. Now let's move on in summation. I want to finish. Now, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I want to finish. So, one trespass of one man brought the whole world to condemnation. One act of forgiveness and hanging on the cross and raising from the dead turned our fortunes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So it was done. Amen. He died for us. He delivered us. But it is upon you, number one, to receive his gift of salvation. Number two, amen, to, 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 to get an understanding, amen, that you've been justified, amen. And then number three, we go to sanctification. Now, sanctification is God's transformation of a believer's whole being. Now, that is your mind need to be sanctified. That's why it says renew our minds daily with the word of God. Because now that you've been justified, you've been um, 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 saved, amen, you're doing the good works, but your mind will continue to have evil in it. You understand what I'm saying? So you renew it continually with the word of God. And I really feel sorry for people who never attend, amen, church service, amen. How do you renew your mind, amen? How do you get edified? So now when you renew your mind, it causes transformation. The word of God will cause transformation then your will too needs to be changed. Then your behaviors, amen, because you could say I've been justified by faith, so I'm going to do things the way I want them. No, when we go to sanctification now, we need to see that you're really born again. And how do we know that? We hear your mind. Your mind dictates what you speak. And then your will, what, how strong is your will? Then your behaviors, amen. Your behaviors show you're born again or you're not born again. You cannot be saying you're born again and you're behaving like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You've been justified and you're behaving like that. Your affections, amen. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, we get this transformation. That's what we call the doctrine of sanctification. You become sanctified. You become holy. That's now we're talking of holiness. Amen. The word we're talking about now is holiness. Now, I'm not going to scripture right now because I want to close, but it says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now, at the doctrinal level of sanctification, when we're doing the good works, we, worked out, we work out our salvation. How do we work it out? By doing those good works we're called to do. Amen. By our behavior change. Amen. By allowing God to transform our minds. Amen. So then we are moving higher. We're working out our salvation with fear and trembling. Now, to be sanctified means you've been set apart. You are now set apart. You are pure. You are holy. We are more than the level of just being justified. Amen. We have now risen. We are now going, walking with Christ. Amen. Living with Christ, manifesting in power. We've been set apart. You've been set apart. So I'm coming to a close, amen. You need to understand, amen. Now that you've been set apart, you need to be pure. You need to be holy. Come on now. When you go, for instance, to serve God, let's say in worshiping. Now, if you're a worshiper, you can never have a time when you're saying, I'm practicing. Let's go to practice, amen. What are we practicing? Worship. No, you can never practice worship. You worship, amen. Worship is worship. You can never go to practice it. You're either worshiping or not worshiping, amen. So it becomes now your heart is transformed. You understand? Now we move to a higher dimension and degree of operating in the grace of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We reach that level when now the things that were as promises are no longer promises. You remember when we read in the book of uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, he was talking of promises. Ladies and gentlemen, when you have reached the level of sanctification, there is no more promise of God. Because you are now living in the reality of those promises. For instance, 
Jesus said, I will send you the promise of the Father when I go. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost. He will reveal everything about me and my Father. Whatever he has, my Father and I say, he will reveal to you. Now, is the Holy Spirit still a promise? To other people, yes. But to us who have him, he's no longer a promise. He's a reality. He's a new creation reality. We're walking with him. We're talking with him. It's no longer a promise. The Bible says riches and honor are in the house of the righteous. Now that you've been justified and you've been made righteous, there's an open gate and an open door for riches and honor to walk into your house. You hear me? So it's no longer a promise. It becomes a reality. Healing is your reality. I declare and I declare after today, you're going to be healed. You will not fall sick again. You will live the fullness of your years. You will not leave your children when you're young. You will not die unmarried. Come on, hear me. And after today, in the name of Jesus, there will never be a ceremony in your family. Amen. For your children, we're supposed to sit. And ladies and gentlemen, you'll be missing. There will be no representation. You will be there. In the name of Jesus, I speak it now, and I feel power being emitted. Receive it in the name of Jesus. So it is one thing to sin, and it is another thing for sin to remain in you. What am I saying by this? What I'm saying is, after we've been sanctified, you no longer live a life of sinning. Uh -uh. You, you might sin because none of us is righteous. The body is not being saved. But it's no longer your character. You cannot be found fighting in the bus, drinking in the bus, you're busy killing people, murdering. No, you can't do that because that's no longer your nature. You've obtained in your nature. Now, 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 in finishing, it means being conformed with Christ, the image of Christ. When people see you, they no longer see you. They see Christ in you. You become Christ-like. I declare and I declare that today you're being lifted into the heavenly realms. I pray by the grace of God, may you get the power and the ability and the grace to do what? To be able to walk and manifest, amen, in the good works. Now, in finishing, when God was punishing Adam and Eve for having eaten on the tree or have been being disobedient, he cast the serpent and said, you crawl, and you crawl from this day and you'll be eating dust. We know that very well. And then he went on to the lady and he said, lady, I'll increase the labor in your childbirth. All right? He came to Adam. He never cast Adam and said, Adam, the ground is cast for your sake. When blessed, God blesses you, he can't curse you. Now you've been justified, you've been blessed, ladies and gentlemen. The enemy has no right over you. So he cast the ground. When he cast the ground, ladies and gentlemen, it was done. He said, thistles will come out, you sweat as you till the ground and so on. So now the path was laid with thistles and thorns. Your path today might be filled, might be a thorny path, but something good is here. Listen to me very well. When Noah had been delivered from the ark, when Noah came out of the ark, he made a sacrifice before God. And God was pleased with the sweet aroma. And he said, never again will I destroy man. Never again will I do this. And he said, the ground from today shall no longer be cast. He reversed the curse that had come to the ground because of Adam. What made God reverse the curse was the good work of the offering that Noah had presented before God. Hear me, child of God, today. I challenge you, your good works, your sacrifices, your offerings are going to turn that curse around that has operated in your family for 500 years. You know, it's going to be turned around. Hear me. Sometimes some things are immediate. Sometimes some things take long. But please don't be, amen, hallelujah, intimidated. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't be tempted to think God forgot you. God never forgets you. He promised I'll be with you always. I'll never leave you, neither forsake you. Jesus promised us, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God promised in the days of Joshua, he said, as I was with Moses, I'm with you. I will never leave you and forsake you. It's not a, 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 a promise. It's a statement of fact. He's going to do it. He means it. He's going to be with you. So I want to encourage you today. Deliver yourself from any curse. Amen. That seems to keep stopping you from doing what you're supposed to do. Amen. From expanding and increasing and rising above. 
I love you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I have a powerful message for you on Thursday. Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to go into something new. Amen. I think I'm going to be done with these new creation realities and I'm going to preach something beautiful and wonderful for you. And the prophetic grace is going to flow in the name of Jesus. I love you so much. I love you too much. Now, I can't close without giving you an opportunity, one, to give your life to Christ Jesus. If you've never confessed, you better confess because, you know, salvation comes through confessing. You believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. Hello? Then, the next thing, amen, I want you to understand is giving unto the Lord. I want to give you an opportunity to give today. Let the curse be broken. Amen. Let the ground, you know, why God grasps the ground is the ground that will release its strength to you and you prosper. It's the ground that releases food for us and we eat and we look so good. It's the ground. So let the ground soften for you. I think you have heard that statement. Let the ground soften for you. Because when the ground hardens for you, you can never succeed in anything. But after today, I declare and I declare. In fact, in Uganda here, there is a city saying that they say, Oyowari ma wagonga. That that one where he's cultivating is soft. Hear me very well. It means once the curse has been lifted, softness is coming in your path. I declare and I declare today as you give unto the Lord, let that curse be broken. Come on, put it at the back of your mind and keep doing the good works. Amen. Hallelujah. That your ground will soften. Hear me. You can send the offering, the tithe, the partnership offering, um, 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 the Isaac offering the barrel offering, the, 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 the breaking the cast offering, send it on those numbers on the screen, 0772-593828 or 0702-593828. I love you so much. May God wish you bless you. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for you've saved us by grace. There is no man who should boast that they are more saved than others. No woman should boast that they are more saved than others. You have, O oh Lord God, O oh Father, justified us, imputed upon us righteousness that has come, O oh Lord, by your grace. And you have justified us and declared us righteous. You have acquitted us, O oh Lord God, from sin, from, from the Lord, and from death. And you have imparted upon us life. I thank you, my Father, for you've raised us up and seated us in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus our Lord. I pray for your children today that they will experience this rising up. They will experience, oh Lord God, this upward rising up in the name of Jesus in every area and every room of their lives. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that your anointing will come upon them like never before. That I will go into dimensions of hyper Marika Shatter financial breakthroughs, hyper opportunities, oh Lord God, oh Father, that the doors will open for them throughout the whole world. I bless them right now. I pray, oh Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that they will be sanctified, that they will become pure, that they will be set apart, that they will live in holiness. Father, I thank you for it is done today in Jesus Christ's holy name. I release power. I release power. I release power. Receive it. In the name of Jesus, be free. Let that stress go. Let that torment of the mind. You've been tormented in the mind and you're feeling you're a loser. You are not a loser. You are a winner. You're feeling you're not loved. You are loved. It looks like nobody cares. God cares. And even people care. Be delivered today in the name of Jesus. You will not die but live. In the name of Jesus, my Father, thank you. It is done. It is done in Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen and amen and amen. And we all say it is done. God richly bless you. We love you. Bye-bye.
kausa koma Tarikili kiusa kachito Monday to Friday usa puma Business says na yo kuna go to Kathi una go seka But one thing they don't know Is just to see zone You're going through It's not permanent Are they calling you a beggar? No school fees for your children They say you are not a leader Cause you don't look qualified 